Hey guys, I just thought that I'd do an updated version of one of my earlier tutorials where I taught how to do this live food search. So as you can see, not too much to it. We just type it in like that and obviously you spell it wrong, you know, it's not going to show up. Um, yeah, and, and then, it, you know, it changes in real time based on what we're typing in. And also it works for spaces, but if we type in something like special character, it's not going to work because it just knows that, you know, no fig's going to have an exclamation mark. Sorry, no, no fruit. It's not going to have special characters in it, in the name, obviously. But, um, yeah, it's not, not really much to this. It's just that, you yeah, know, yeah. this video here was just a bit bad. I didn't really know what I was doing. I used jQuery unnecessarily. jQuery is kind of on the way out. Oh, but no, I'll be yeah. using the um, same technologies. I'll be using Node.js, MongoDB for the database. And that's about it. Just the rest is just standard HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So we'll begin the tutorial now. Okay, so here we are in our project folder. As you can see, we've already set up a lot of the boilerplate code just so that we don't waste time off this tutorial. And as you can see, we've installed and then we've required two dependencies, Express and Mongoose. This other import, it comes from a file here. And as you can see, what we've done is we set up the schema for our um, collection that we'll be using. And then we've exported the model so that we can just import it here and then use it and then after we've set up uh, mongoose the database is called fruit live search the uh, collection is called fruits again i'll show you all this in a second <clears throat> and then these settings just there to avoid deprecation warnings might change by the time that you're watching the video i don't know after that day we've initialized our app using express because this is very simple expresses and then we've allowed, we made it so we can uh, handle JSON data Express using app.use, uh, this line here. And then after we've uh, made it so we can use more data types, which is what this does. And then we have initialized static folder to host our style. We won't actually be using a JavaScript file. So all we have in the static folder is just our style sheet so we can use it. And then we are sending on the default route, homepage route, we are sending the user to our only view, which is just that index.html file. And if we start our Nodemon server, I've already got a script, npm and start. And um, it just sends Nodemon, as you can see, nodemon server.js. And then we go to that default route, oh, we're already on it actually. Um, as you could see, we already saw it to start, but our live search functionality isn't working because that's the purpose of this tutorial. And as for, we'll just uh, clear this so that you can see it better. So use for live search, well, that's our database name. And then we'll say show collections. As you can see, that's that fruits collection. And then we'll say db.fruits.finds so that we can see. As you can see, all the documents are following the schema, which you just saw, or the schema structure, which you just saw. And yeah, the data doesn't really matter here, you know. Obviously, you'll be using your own data, but we just need some dummy data so that we can actually do the live search. So the first thing that we'll do in our index.html file is we will include an event handler on this input, on the uh, text input. We'll say on key up, and then we will link to function which you haven't created yet obviously called send data and we give it this which which refers to the actual input element itself so pass the input element into the send data function so that the send data function can handle the value of the input etc because obviously it needs to send that to um, so that we can query our database what we'll now do it you know we'll just use script tags because there isn't really a lot of um, front end code that we're going to be writing here, so it's send data, uh, so we can just do it in script tags, you know, it doesn't really matter, and then, you know, we get access to that input element now for E, and what we'll now do is, we'll now use the fetch API, because a lot of ours will support it, and we will send a post request to get fruit, because it's a post request, we need to say that it is, so the method will be post, and then we'll be sending JSON data on this post, so the body, sorry not the body, headers, we will have this content type header and then application JSON. So without that header we wouldn't be able to send a JSON data on this post request. And then next we will say body json.stringify and then we'll just have one field 
And what that does, it holds the value of the input. And then what we'll now do, we'll just close this off for now. Um, we'll now have to handle that root. So it's a post, uh, you know, root handler because that was what our, um, we're sending a post request to it. And all we'll do, we'll just say let payload equals rec dot body dot payload dot trim to get rid of the opening and closing white space because that just might interfere with our database querying and it's called rec dot body dot payload because the payload field there and what we'll do now just to make sure this is working we'll just say console dot log payload so that we should be able to see um, the value of our input when we type in data into it and we'll refresh as well just to make sure that's working. So we'll type in Apple and we should be able to see this in our console now hopefully. Yeah as you could see every character because remember it was on key up and you know we had to release our keys uh, after every character so that's the reason for that. As you can see it's working. Okay what we'll now do we'll use this payload data the one that we just logged we will use it to make a query and we'll say let search equals fruit our model we imported it there fruit dot find and the only field that our documents have is the name field and what we want to do is we want to basically make a case insensitive search if they type in apple with you know an uppercase it will still match the um actually i think it's stored uppercase in our database but yeah anyway likewise you know if it was lowercase but it's stored in our database uppercase we still want it to match so, you know, whether it's uppercase or lowercase should be irrelevant. And the way that we do that, we'll use regex. And we'll use that with this query operator as specified by the dollar. And we'll say new reg exp. And what we'll do here is we will say it has to start everything that we uh, return from our query. We'll have to start with payload. So if we type in A, so I think we've got um, apple, you know, an apricot. So if we just type in A, then it would it would turn both apple and apricot. But then if we type in A-P-P-E-L-E, -E, you know, then it will only return apple, not apricot, you know. Um, and then we say plus, and then after that can be anything else. So we use dot, and that can, dot can just be any character, and then zero or more, as specified by the asterisk. And then here's the good part now, we use the we uh, comma to use a flag and we use the i flag so that performs a case insensitive search and after that we'll say execute so that, can, so that we can actually make the query but because we're querying our database we need to make this an async because that this won't happen instantaneously so we won't proceed with the root handler uh, until we've actually gotten a value back or, or, or a response side from our database well, we don't really need to do this at the moment, but what we'll now do is we will limit our search results to 10. Again, we don't really need to do this because we don't really have that many entries in our database at the moment. But, you know, if you're querying a large database, you might want to do this because otherwise you would just be displaying too many results for the user. Especially if you're just typing out one character, you know, A, you don't want thousands of search results that begin with A to be displayed. So what we'll do is we will slice the array because this turn returns an array and we'll slice it um, up until, but not including 10. But then, you know, obviously because it's zero based index. So nine is actually the 10th one if you start counting at one. And then, so yeah, we're just returning basically 10, yeah, limit search results to 10 basically. And then what we'll do, we'll send, we start send the field we payload again, that search data. And that's actually all we need to do on the server side. It's pretty simple. And again, I might as well show you this. Actually, no, I'll show you in a second. When we get a response from the server, this then callback reactivated. I mean, what, what we want to do, we'll say, we'll decode it because it should be JSON because we're communicating in JSON. That's how we communicate asynchronously. And then we use another then to call some code when we finished passing that JSON data so that we can work with it. And then what we'll then do, we'll say let payload equals data dot payload, like so. 
And just to make you sh uh, just to make sure that things are working, we'll log that. So we should be able to see your data on the client side. Again, I'll be first to get rid of that. And then we'll set A BP. Okay, we'll we we we'll refresh there. Yeah, so I don't know, it does that sometimes as you can see, you know. We've got avocado and apple, sorry, not not what did I say before? I don't even know what so. Um yeah, so we got apple and avocado. As you can see we're getting results now. That's all we really needed to see. So we'll continue with what we're doing on the client side. What we actually want to do is we want to insert HTML content into this section here. So we will have to get a reference to that section. So we'll get a reference to it now. That's which is the reason why we gave it an ID so that we can just grab it uh, very easily. There we go. And then what we'll say is we will say well, first of all, actually, we'll clear. So if we're making a new query and there's already got um, HTML content inside, then we want to clear that so that you can make way for new content. So we'll do it like so. Likewise, if uh, we typed in something, you know, we started like, well, there's no fruits that we have that begin with Z. We're not in our database anyway. So if we they typed in Z or something, then we need to show them an error because there was no match, so we'll say search result dot inner html equals make it a paragraph and again I'll show you the styling for this in a second we'll just say sorry nothing found, very simple and then we'll return so that you won't execute anything else, we'll just exit out of this method entirely and if you're wondering how this is styled this is how it's styled here Again, you can pause this if you want to see it. Not too complex. Again, the styling. This isn't a styling tutorial. It's mainly an Ajax tutorial. But if you get past this if statement, because we have actually got data, uh, the payload uh, is greater than 1. Or sorry, is greater than 0, sorry. Then we'll need to display at least the one entry that we have. So we'll loop through it. We'll say payload for each. Um, I don't know why that happened. Probably because of an extension that I just installed, but it's a bit weird. <laughs> We're not going to use it now, basically. But um, we'll say if basically you want line breaks to separate each of the entries. So if we are past the first index, then what we'll need to do, we'll need to we we'll use plus equals to concatenate this horizontal wall. Because we want horizontal walls before each entry, other than the first entry, that's the only one that won't have a horizontal wall before it. And then after that, we will say search results dot in HTML. Again, same principle. Actually, we use backticks just to make it easier. Paragraph, and then we'll use tag template literal there. And inside, we will have the item, the name field, and then. What we'll now do is, uh, where's the end of this this uh, then method? What we'll now do, we'll just return out of this. And so if we do get to a point where, actually no, yeah, we'll leave it at that for now. There are, there is some extra stuff that we need to do. Yeah, so that's the problem. But essentially, you know, the live search is looking good. But, you know, there are some problems, for example, here. Um... And basically the reason being is because we're querying the database and it's just looking for everything. So we need to prevent that. So if, we, if, we, if we've got nothing, then we don't want to query the database. So the first thing that we what I will do is we will make a query parameter. And what this query... Sorry, we'll do a regular expression. And we'll match on our value. So what we typed into the input. And what, what we want to do is we want to exclude special characters. The only things that will be allowed are just uh, characters, so no numbers, no special characters, just characters and spaces, or even no punctuation. So we'll say it has to begin with, and then it can have um, zero or more of these, but what we'll have in here is a, a Z, again they could have both, a lower and upper, they could have lower and uppercase, that's fine. 
And then the second match will be if they've just typed in spaces. Because again, we don't want to make the query if they just typed in spaces. Because if we do make the query, then we'll get back everything due to the way that we made um, that due to the way that we, that we've created our database. So this backslash uh, s is a white space, and then this asterisk is a quantifier. It means zero or more. So match uh, basically, you know, zero or more of these, and that goes up to infinity. There's no limit to how many it can match. So if our entire string is just a uh, sequence of spaces, then it will match up all of them. And then we'll say if match to zero, because we haven't uh, used any capturing classes, so everything will be just captured in the first item of the array. If that equals our value, so if our, basically if our value just is a sequence of spaces with nothing else, so just spaces, no characters, no nothing, then what we'll do is we will just remove everything, remove all the HTML inside of this, and then we'll just return so that we want to proceed uh, onwards to make the fetch request. And what we'll then do is we'll say we will only make the fetch request if our entire string matches. Um, so if this matches our entire query, so if our, not just the small parts of our query matches it, but if our entire input data matches this regular expression, only then will we make, um, yeah, only then will, will we uh, make the query. And we'll need to be careful here, you know. There's a lot that can go wrong here. Yeah, we're already getting problems here. But at the very end here, we will say, yeah, I'm going to have to, yeah. Okay, so, got a bit of semicolons, but essentially, we'll put a return statement at the end of the if statement, so that we don't execute the last thing that will happen. So if there isn't the case, and we've maybe we've included special characters, or something else. Actually, no, we need to, yeah, it's very important. We missed out a space there, actually, because remember I said, or uh, characters, including spaces. Well, that's the reason why we need space there. So if that isn't the case, maybe we've included numbers or whatever, you know, data, which isn't, or just spaces and letters. Then we will say search results. We'll just empty it out like we have before. And so now we should have a finished result. So now I'll be typing, you know, spaces then we won't get anything, but if we begin typing in letters now, then we will get something. Again, backslash on that. Again, special characters, numbers, nothing. Even letters after that, you know, letters here, nothing. We don't want we don't want to handle that. And then here is our stuff. I mean, Guava. Sorry, nothing found. As you can see, you know, Z, X, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, nothing found. Special characters, we just don't want that. And yeah, I mean, that's all there is to it. I mean, pretty much done. If you didn't understand this tutorial, or if you thought that my explanations were lacking, then please tell me so in the comments box below, and I will try and clarify any problems that you, you know, I'll, probably, I'll try and solve any problems that you might have. But I hope you did understand this video, and I hope you learned something from it. And more importantly, I hope you have a great day, and peace out.